we're here at Lime Art Association. It's November 2017 and the restoration uh, has begun. They're mostly starting um, on the north side of the building with uh, the studio and uh, leading on to the north face of the uh, original side of the building. Uh, these shingles would have been from 1921 and they're all in the middle of being replaced right now along with the vents that you can see. Down here you can see the uh, Goodman Gallery, the, this is the north face of the Goodman Gallery, which is from 1938, and uh, all this is re-shingled uh, now, uh, it's the first time it's been re-shingled since it was built in 1938, and you can see also the studio here has been re-shingled, and not just re-shingled, but all the millwork uh, has been fixed, all the gutters, and, and um, the studio is actually from 1978, which was put in place, and, and you can see everything's all finished now in this, in this part of the building. Charles A. Platt, the architect of the original part of the building in 1920, um, specified on, his, uh, on the shingles for them to have 11-inch exposures. Uh, this was on the final design, 11-inch exposures um, with 24-inch boards. Uh, uh, red, red cedar shingles, as you can see here, and um, that way with 11 inch you get a triple overlap of the shingles. And although this part of the building is uh, from 1978, um, they kept that shingle exposure throughout each part of, of the building. Actually, originally uh, Charles A. Platt, his first design, had, had specified 36 inch uh, shingles. So here you can see the Goodman Gallery. Uh, this is the south facing uh, side um, and it is yet to be re-shingled. Uh, these, these shingles you see here are from 1938 when the building was built. This is south facing so it's gotten the brunt of the sunshine. Um, also the, uh, the ocean, the, the sound, um, Long Island Sound is just over, just over on the other side of the highway basically. Um, and this was put in right before the hurricane of 38, and, and Lime Art Association would have uh, definitely faced uh, some severe winds, some severe weather at the, right, after, right after this part of the building was built. Uh, and anyway, you can see the deterioration in the, in the shingles right now. Now this entrance to the building here was put in in uh, 1978, and it was actually the Lyme Academy of Fine Arts, which is now Lyme Academy College of Fine Arts, which is uh, located very close by here. Um, but it was the original entrance which led into the studio on the other side. And uh, you can see it's, it's still here. These shingles are from then 1978. It was actually, this part of the building was designed by architect Robert I. Carter, who lived in town and designed a few other buildings in the town, including the Including the firehouse and the uh, post office, um, and he designed the studio. But you can see that he based his design on the front of the building, very much trying to mimic the front of the building that Charles A. Platt had designed in 1920. So th now this is the uh, south facing side of the original 1921 portion of the building. This is the part that Charles A. Platt designed. Um, these shingles you see here were actually put in in 1993. It was re-shingled in 1993. They had to raise money for that. So these shingles are still relatively relatively good, although they have darkened. Um, some other things you see here, the, these vents, these lower vents were covered uh, a few years ago. Uh, the reason being that Lime Art Association was originally a summer uh, art gallery. It was only expected to be used in the summer, so they had vents that you know, let the let the air in to cool the building. Um, and you can see that above there too, the uh, louvered vents above. That, those are in the attic. Those actually have to be opened uh, in the uh, you know each summer. And up there, you'll see the the fan. It's now a fan, but it was just a, uh, a circular louvered vent. Simply replaced by a fan to help uh, uh, ventilate the building. So this is the 
back of the original part of the building. This is actually uh, west, westward facing here. Um, this is one of the few remaining parts of the original uh, part of the building. And um, it's, uh, it was, it's been very protected because the Goodman Gallery is right above us, and that was put in 1938. So what you see here are the 1921 shingles. And originally, Charles A. Platt had designed in his first design for the Lime Art Association, the building was supposed to be uh, white in color, have a whitewash. Um, it was actually a white creosote stain with uh, uh, a color called Dixie White put over the top of that, which was a shingle stain. And uh, so finally, in the final design, um, when it was ready to go in the late 1920, um, they decided to just do one coat of white creosote, white creosote stain, and so you can still see it here because it's been protected all these years. Um, in fact, this this part here where the shingles have been removed, you can see um, the remnants of it. So. so this here is the downstairs section of Lime Art Association, um, and they have the art market called the Art Market, um, to the, uh, this additional gallery space. Uh, it was put in in 2010. Actually, there was a, a flood um, in 2010, and, and it, it, although it was devastating, it actually, uh, the positive thing was they were able to put in new gallery space uh, to hang more artwork. Why don't we go in and look at the studio? You can see where art classes are held uh, every week. Go into the studio here. <clears throat> and the studio, again, is 1978. And we refurbished this studio uh, a couple years ago, 2015, uh, repainted the walls and redid the floors, and uh, you can see some of the artwork that hangs on the wall to inspire uh, classes. This studio was used uh, by Robert Brackman, the, the painter, and uh, he was known for having that Brackman gray of the, the wall color, and so this is, you can see as close as we can get. So you can see some of the artwork we have hanging. Some of it is donated uh, to my art association. Um, some was just from the permanent collection. And one of our recent acquisitions here is a, a large drawing by Dean G. Keller, um, who passed away in 2005. And this is one of his full length um, studies that he, he based on his uh, trips to the Middle East. This one's uh, based on a drawing he did in Cairo. Portrait of William Goodman, who was actually the third president of Lime Art Association. And uh, this painting is by Oliver Grover. Uh, the painting was Goodman. And it was painted actually in Chicago, uh, where, where Grover was based. And this was eventually donated to Lime Art Association by William Goodman's granddaughter, who is Marjorie Graff. She donated uh, some other artwork as well. This is a, a self-portrait of Alpheus P. Cole that was painted in 1924. Now, Alpheus Cole actually lived to the age of 112. Uh, this, was, this was painted in 1924. He lived from uh, 1876 to 1988. This is a portrait that uh, uh, Cole painted of, of the artist and illustrator Victor Perard. This little portrait here uh, of this uh, young lady was uh, painted by Tosca Olinsky. And Tosca Olinsky was a longtime member of Lime Art Association. Her father was as well. He was the portraitist. Uh, Ivan Olinsky. The drawing you see here by, was by uh, Dean Keller Sr. Uh, Dean Keller Sr. Uh, 
passed away in 1992. And it's a beautiful study. He would do uh, charcoal studies for all of his paintings. And then last uh, still life here is by, also by Alphaeus Cole. Uh, this is a painting that he would have done up in a studio in Lyme. Just using the natural light. You can see other uh, drawings we have of uh, some of our instructors. There's also a couple of Dean Keller of the figure, Dean G. Keller figure drawings. Um, I actually saved those from the class that I had with him. On this wall of the studio here, we have a drawing by Rudy Zallinger. And uh, we're very happy to have this drawing hanging up. Uh, it's a, a great influence on, on the students here. Uh, this is a drawing he would have done in Dean Keller Sr.'s class at Yale. Uh, it's dated 1939. A uh, beautiful uh, sense of anatomy. And it's a very informed drawing. Rudy Zallinger was very famous for painting the uh, uh, famous murals at the Peabody Museum, including the, the Age, of, uh, Age of Reptiles, which uh, was a painting that took him four years. Also downstairs is the archive room, um, where archival documents of Lime Art Association uh, are stored in here, and you'll see that. Um, these chairs are all the way from 1921. They were uh, part of the original, um, when they had the first opening of Lime Art Association on August 6th, 1921. These chairs were there, and they're still, we still have a few. Many um, exhibition catalogs through the years are stored down here, along with some artwork of uh, members throughout Lime Art Association's history. So, just as an example, here's a uh, painting by the artist Margaret Cooper. And again, the uh, Cooper Fairy Gallery is upstairs. Uh, this is a, a, a nice example of, uh, she painted a lot of farm scenes, really specialized in that. And this is one of my favorite paintings uh, that Lime Art Association has in their collection. It's by the artist Frederick Sexton, Frederick Lester Sexton, who was a, uh, obviously specialized also in, in farm scenes, but he painted very thick, very thickly, real thick impastos, and he was known to paint with the palette knife, and he would have been very influenced by post-impressionist artwork that he would have seen, um, artists like Van Gogh, but he was uh, very influenced by uh, earlier artists of the Lime Art Association, artists like Gregory Smith, for example. This is another one of my favorite paintings that Lime Art Association has in their collection uh, by the artist Winfield Scott Klein. And he was known for this motif of the oxen uh, pulling the cart and farmers at work. And it's just a beautiful Beautiful uh, sense of color here. So now we'll head up to the galleries. The set of stairs that you see here used to be on the outside of the building, and um, now it's part of the, uh, connects the basement to the upstairs. So we'll go up to the galleries then. So when you come upstairs from the basement, you enter the coal gallery, uh, which used to be called the West Gallery when the Lemart Association was first built. And it was intended for just for sketches. And when Charles Platt had originally designed the building, this particular room was actually smaller and was intended to just be the sketch gallery. Uh, but it's actually the same size as the other three galleries uh, here. And this is known as the Coal Gallery now. Um, it was dedicated to 
the artist Alpheus Cole, and the plaque is, is here, and it says, dedicated in honor of his 100th birthday, Alpheus P. Cole Gallery, by his fellow artists, uh, July 12th, 1976, and he was born in 1876. And the Cole Gallery leads into uh, the Goodman Gallery. <clears throat> you descend a couple of stairs down into the Goodman Gallery. And this was, this room was built in 1938. The funds were given um, by his uh, widow, uh, Erna, and the dedication plaque we'll see here to William L. Goodman, who was the third president of Live Art Association. The Goodman Gallery uh, was built in 1938 by Leon Tiffany, was the uh, builder. He actually used uh, one of Charles Platt's original drawings for the other galleries. But it was slightly modified, as you can see, with the two stairs, the, uh, the staircase descending into the gallery, and also these, uh, these French doors, which led out onto a, uh, a balcony. On display here in the Cole Gallery are some of Limar Association's archives. Uh, what you see here is actually from the collection of um, Elizabeth Gordon Chandler. It was actually from her estate. And these were actually returned uh, to Lime Art Association rather recently. They had a ceremony. And you'll see many exhibition catalogs, for example, of the annual exhibitions, um, exhibition catalogs of the watercolor exhibitions. And off to the, the side of the Cole Gallery is what's known as the Elected Artists Gallery. And this room is dedicated to featuring the works of the elected artists. Um, and you'll see their work on display here. This was originally called the Brush Room, which was uh, part of the original Lime Academy of Fine Arts. It was an area to, of course, store things and to clean your brushes. We'll walk into the foyer here of Lime Art Association, and this is the entrance to the building. Um, the show up right now is Deck the Walls, uh, 2017, and primarily it features smaller works, um, and that's the show that's on display now. Now the gallery we're in right now this is known as the Cooper Ferry Gallery, and it was named in honor of uh, the artist Barbara Ferry, and what, uh, her friend and mentor, uh, Margaret Cooper. And over on the other, uh, the other side here, this is the Foster Cadell Gallery. And it's named after the artist Foster Cadell, who passed away in 2013. He was an elected artist here at Lime Art Association, and this uh, room was dedicated to him. Um, and his work display is displayed permanently uh, here. And this is a, one of his paintings. And there's Foster up there. He was a very influential artist, well known for his, um, his books, including Keys to the Successful Landscape Painting, which are very influential on artists today. It's now December 25th, um, and Sapia Builders has 
made quite a lot of progress on the building. Uh, as you can see, the uh, north side here of the Goodman Gallery is completely finished with the new um, circular, circular vent uh, put in, and as well as all the vents and trim. Also notice on the north side of the original part of the building, uh, those lower vents have been refurbished as well. And so you can see now uh, here in December some of the uh, progress that's been made on the south side of Goodman Gallery. Uh, the shingles are about, about halfway done here. And you can see also they're going to replace that circular vent at, at the top. Uh, also notice on uh, what's the back of the building, which actually faces west, uh, they've replaced those French doors, which were put in in 1938. Originally, that was intended to come out to the balcony uh, to overlook the lily pond, which is right where we're standing right now. There was a lily pond. Uh, people used to talk about coming out there and looking at uh, turtles and all kinds of things. Um, but uh, in 1978, the, <coughs> the lily pond was drained and this uh, parking lot uh, was put in uh, to accommodate the art students who are coming to study here. So the part that uh, is waiting to be done is going to be done last by Sapien Builders. Is of course, the facade of the Lime Art Association, which is the most famous part of Charles Platt's design, um, is the facade. And basically, it's, it's mostly 1921 shingles on the building right now. Um, they would have had the white stain, uh, which, which is a creosote stain, to help protect, protect them. The other thing that's noteworthy about Platt's design is you can see the uh, front front entrance, the trellis work that goes around the door. It's interesting that trellis work actually, you can see it in old photographs, it continued all along the facade and all the way around the side and around back. And, uh, and that was intended to kind of collect the vines that would grow up. Actually, the uh, you can see in old photos the vines really overtook, um, overtook the uh, trellis work and um, they were significantly affected by the hurricane of, of 38 as well. Now Charles Platt's um, most famous contribution to Lime Art Association and to other uh, galleries and museums that he designed was his uh, terrific use of, of skylights to illuminate the galleries from above. Um, Lime Art Association was described as having a perfect, perfect light. Um, and interestingly, the skylights were actually higher in the original design. And through uh, uh, cost-saving measures, the artist asked Charles Platt to uh, lower the skylights, which he uh, reluctantly agreed to do. Um, so there are modifications from Charles Platt's original 19, early 1920, uh, which was May 1920 design to what Lime Art Association actually uh, became in, in 1921. The perfect light that Charles Platt actually got for Lime Art Association for illuminating the interior uh, was accomplished with uh, what they called monk, monk's cloth, uh, which was laid across underneath the skylights, a cheesecloth that um, was obviously very inexpensive to put in, and uh, as it turned out, had uh, just the perfect lighting for Lime Art Association. Now today, uh, that cheesecloth is is not used. It's um, sort of uh, plexiglass uh, lay lights that uh, have to be cleaned every so often. So we're here on April 1st of 2018, and as you can see, Sapia Builders is making great progress on the, on the building. Um, the, uh, the here uh, south side of the building is all complete and we even have the uh, original circular of um, Louvre back, the vent up there. So, so progress is, uh, is very good and uh, it, we'll come around now to the front of the building, to the facade. And you can see the, what is just about to take place is 
the uh, replacing of the shingles and all the repairs to the, uh, to, uh, all the, wood, the, wood, the woodwork and everything is all going to take place. So, down in here uh, on some of these shingles from 1921 <coughs> that were have been exposed now after all these years it's very interesting you can actually see the original uh, color of the building that uh, sort of whitewash effect that the shingles had uh, when it was unveiled in uh, August of uh, 1921 and um, we will look forward to showing some some video uh, of them uh, of Sapien Builders replacing all these shingles. All these shingles are going to come off, and uh, the trellis work will get repaired. These uh, front windows will get repaired, will get uh, replaced. So, to be continued. So we're here in late June of 2018 and thought we'd uh, show you the fully finished Lime Art Association. Sapia Builders has uh, completed the project. As you can see here, the thermometer reads 100%. It says thank you. 